This is Buenos in the Morning. My name is Polly Suba, and we've reached out to all three congressional candidates. With me now is former speaker, Dr. Judith Wampat, but everybody knows you as Judy Wampat. Yes. yes. And, and thank you so much for, for that introduction. Yes, I am uh, Judy Wampat, and I'd just like to let those of you know, who know, don't know me and are watching is that I'm an educator by profession. I was in the classroom, so I was a guidance counselor and a school principal, and I did that for about 25 years until I retired out of DOE. Then I ventured into politics, ran for the legislature, served for nine terms, and five of those as the first female speaker. So public service has always been part of my life. I did not stop even after I was out for about six years. I went into the private sector. Uh, my daughter and I opened up a uh, you know, plant-based coffee shop and, you know, vegan cookies and, and right in the midst of the pandemic. But we, you know, we, we made it work. I continued volunteering as well for Vero, where we uh, helped victims of uh, uh, domestic violence and sexual assault. I worked also as with uh, Prel, which is a Pacific region education and learning organization to provide education throughout the region. So I, I continue to, to do all those. Right, and so now you're running for Congress, yes. right? Have, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm back in the wagon, and I am running for Congress. Right, and if you're elected, I wanted to ask what would be the committee or subcommittee that you'd be advocating for? I think two committees are, are really very uh, important for Guam. One will be the Committee on Natural Resources, primarily because they do have oversight uh, for all, over all the territories right. and indigenous uh, peoples. And they also deal with the compact agreements. So that's critical for Guam. The second, just equally important, will be the Armed Services Committee. We have a lot of veterans. And not only because we have our veterans, you see, but we have found out, I found out through speaking with them, is that these are individuals who really deserve you know, the health care and services because of all that they have given uh, to the, the national security for the protection you know, of our nation. And what I've learned is that many of them would actually have to go to Hawaii just to either get an approval, to be able to see a doctor, and then fly back. The other day, a friend of mine left, was there for two days, came right back last night. It, it, it's so unfair for our, our veterans to go, to go through all that. Many of them are bedridden, cannot even travel. So one of the things I really would like to work uh, on would be to get a regional office for them here. And, in, and with that is that I'll make sure that in my district office that I would have a veteran liaison to navigate all of those uh, veteran issues. So, right. so that's important as well to let even Congress know, to let the armed service members know of how critical it is that we not own, if we want to continue to recruit, we want to that we can, and we do, by the way, have the highest uh, you know, uh, recruitment record here compared to any, any state. But then at the same time, we have a lot of veterans uh, who are here and want to continue to stay here. But it makes it very difficult you know, for them. So the Armed Services Committee is definitely critical. And I say that, uh, if, if it's OK, if I can go into this, um, is that I want to put language in the NDA, several languages or amendment into it, because there are going to be billions of dollars that will be coming to Guam for construction work. I want to make sure that those dollars actually translate to more jobs for our people. The second thing is that there is in their contract a language that says that you must follow the law and rules and regulations of wherever you're at, what state or territory. So I want to make sure right. they register at uh, revenue and taxation, and that then they pay their fair share of the, of the taxes. Two new languages that I like, because I want to build capacity. I know that they're bringing in some workers from the states. There are all our H2 workers are in the base. But I want to build capacity. And by doing that is to, for them to provide training for local individuals. And then that way, our people will have jobs. But yes, we'll still have H2 workers. 
I also want to put in a new language, a preferen preferential treatment also for our local businesses, you know, because we're going to be here all the time. We're going to be providing for, you know, the military in all aspects. So why not, you know, right. because they're here. National security is here. This is a federal issue. So therefore, I want to make sure we balance this so what's good for the military has to be good for the community as well. Right. Are there other issues? Because there are many federal issues, right, that our congressman or congresswoman will have to face. Uh, some of the other issues that you'd like to bring up and, and just talk about right now? Well, yes. One, one big issue that's really impacting on our community is housing. Right. And many, because they're not building as many houses per se for individual family members, barracks, they will. So most of the time we fi we're finding that because there aren't enough, they want to go out to the community. What happens when they go out to the community is that they raise the prices really so high that our locals can't afford to rent. I have an employee right now in my shop and he has to um, rent with four other guys to help you know, pay for rent. Yeah, that's not uncommon. It's, you're right, it really isn't, and it shouldn't be. You know, this is where they live, this is where they work, and, and, and everybody wants to be able to, to provide for themselves and their families when they decide, or maybe even buy. So what I want to do is to, I want to enlist the, the governmental accounting you know, office, GAO, to be able to do a study to, to see what the impact is of military you know, vouchers going to their people, coming into our community, and you know, normally when they do that, there would be recommendation. I would like to also enlist the Congressional Research Service Office because they would do almost the exact same thing. But the difference here is that then they'll be able to make recommendations to members of Congress about what they can do in terms of either amendment to you know, a law or even for an introduction of a new law. So that is critical. Right. And because you know, at the same time, because when you think about all these, so jobs are being affected, uh, food security is being affected, housing is being affected. So with food security, we all know at the same time as well is that all of our food com comes in. They're shipped in, 90% of our food comes in. Imagine if we're able then to be, uh, to be given some um, waivers or exceptions, you know, in, in terms of, uh, yes, about the Jones Act, uh, for food and household items. Imagine what that would do, but, but not there. I'm not saying that we're just gonna rely on that entirely. What I like to do now also is that with the, with, uh, the Department of Commerce and also with um, uh, USDA, because I want us to be sustainable. So I want to get funding so that we'll be able to sustain our farming industry, our aqua industry. A lot of people have not talked about that, but that's so critical. Our climate is perfect for aquaculture. And we've got our coastal villages also that can participate in that. Imagine that if we're able to do that, we'll be able to sustain our community. I don't know if you remember this. A couple of weeks ago, I went to shopping, grocery shopping, and the shelves were empty. And then I asked, what happened? I said, well, a ship didn't come in. We don't want to find ourselves like that. And when things like get... You're right, and then no, but imagine what it would be like if by chance, whatever conflicts you know, are going on out there, the Jones, guess what the Jones Act is, was originally designed for, is that during war, is that then they can take their ships to be used to be able to, to provide the supplies that their, their other military ships right. are going to need. Well, we're in a time of peace, but at the same time, right. there's all this tension going on out there, and, and what's going to happen? Should, should they then uh, you know, en enlist all those uh, ships, private ships? Where would that leave us? So sustainable food, long-term food security is critical for us here in Guam. Another teaching lesson. Oh, yes. Yeah, Learn history lesson. <laughs> thank you for that, uh, Dr. Judy. Uh, we don't have much time. There's so many issues that we can cover, right? Uh, so maybe you can just talk about how people can find more information, more about your platform. I watched the uh, forum the other, the other day, and I, I got a lot of good information there. And um, I think you can find that online with the 
uh, PSSA group at UOG. I'll find that link and I'll, I'll share that little, a little bit later because it's very important that we learn more about our candidates. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll leave you with uh, some time to, to give out more information about your platform and then where they can find that information. Well, my primary platform and the message that I wanted to tell our people is that I will fight for the security of our families, our economy, and our environment. These three themes are all interrelated. One without the other will definitely determine whether we as families will be able to survive or not. Right. It's just great uh, that you're, you make yourself available and I've seen you uh, make yourself available to other media outlets, and that's, it's just so very important to and, do that. And, and one more, if I may, yeah. is that every Friday at 12.30 to 2.30, they can come to a SEGA, and there'll be coffee on duty. So therefore, please feel free to come. No need for an appointment. I'm there, 12.30 to 2.30 at a SEGA. A SEGA is right behind Ocapeles, and yeah. you can come and have coffee or tea with me. Ask and ask me, all oh, ask me questions, wow. absolutely. Yes, right. I Where your stance that. is on certain issues. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Judy. Appreciate you being here with us here on Buenos in the morning. Uh, we are reaching out to the other congressional candidates, and we hope to get them on as well, so we can learn more about their platforms and what they're advocating for if they were to become congressmen or congresswomen. This is Buenos in the morning.